dear students in this video i will be discussing a case of the mammary gland it is related to the upper limb part 3 the case is a 66 year old female presented with a swelling in her left breast which had increased in size over the last few days on examination the swelling was palpable in the upper outer quadrant of her left breast subsequent investigations were suggestive of carcinoma of the left breast so this is the case and the related questions are explain the anatomical basis of the different changes seen in the overlying skin and nipple in case of carcinoma of the breast secondly describe the blood supply and lymphatic drainage of the mammary gland or in other way it can be asked that how can carcinoma breast metastasize via hematogenous and lymphatic routes or name the lymph nodes most likely infiltrated by this carcinoma and how can such carcinoma spread to opposite breast and elsewhere in the body so the first question explain the anatomical basis of the different changes seen in the overlying skin and nipple in case of carcinoma of the breast so if there is a lump in the breast and if it is a cancerous growth so what we will find on examination there might be retraction of the nipple retraction of nipple is due to infiltration of the lactiferous duct and their consequent fibrosis discharge from the nipple might be seen on squeezing it so in this diagram we can see these are the lactiferous duct so the mammary gland is divided into it consists of about 15 to 20 lobes and each lobe is a cluster of alveoli and each lobe is drained by lactiferous duct as we can see here the lactiferous duct converts towards the nipple and open on it and near its termination each duct has a dilatation and that is known as lactiferous sinus so in this diagram we can see the lactiferous duct lactiferous sinus same in this diagram so because of the infiltration of these lactiferous duct by the cancer cell their subsequent fibrosis there will be retraction of nipple the other thing is there might be retraction or puckering that is folding of the skin of the breast why because cancer cells may infiltrate very important suspensory ligament or the ligaments of cooper the breast becomes fixed because of the contraction of these ligaments so here we can see in this diagram these are the suspensory ligaments of cooper now what are these these are the fibrous lobar septa right uh, made of connective tissue so the fibrous lobar septa that is suspensory ligament they are connective tissue partitions they separate the glandular lobes of the breast and compartmentalize the breast tissue and these septa run through the depth of the breast from the dermis of the skin to the underlying pectoral fascia and are most pronounced in the superior aspect of the breast where they are especially termed the ligament of cooper so any edema and or tumor within the breast can apply traction on this suspensory ligament and this tension causes the dimpling of the skin and this will be seen as poda orange appearance so as we can see here poda orange appearance means appearance like that of the peel of an orange because of edema or leathery thickening of the skin the skin is often dimpled and has prominent pores so this is a very important clinical sign in case of carcinoma of the breast now the second question describe the blood supply and lymphatic drainage of mammary gland or in other way as i told you how can the breast cancer metastasize or spread via hematogenous and lymphatic routes or name the lymph node most likely infiltrated by this carcinoma 
and how can such cancer spread to the opposite breast and elsewhere in the body so first let's see the blood supply of the mammary gland that is the arteries and the veins so the main arteries which supply the mammary gland we know that the mammary gland is extremely vascular it is supplied by branches of first the axillary artery as we can see here which branch of axillary artery so here we can see lateral thoracic artery lateral thoracic artery has a lateral mammary branches which supply the mammary gland in addition there are thoraco acromial and superior thoracic branches of the axillary artery the other important is the internal thoracic artery so we know that there are medial mammary or uh, perforating branches especially in the second third and fourth spaces they are large and supply the mammary gland also the lateral mammary branches of the lateral cutaneous branches of posterior intercostal arteries also supply the mammary gland all these arteries converge on the breast and are distributed from the anterior surface the posterior surface is relatively avascular now coming to the venous drainage the veins follow the arteries they first converge towards the base of nipple where they form an anastomotic venous circle and from where the veins run to superficial and deep sets the superficial veins as we can see the superficial veins drain into internal thoracic vein here we can see here the medial mammary medial mammary mammary tributaries of the internal thoracic veins and into the superficial veins of the lower part of neck whereas the deep veins drain into the axillary and posterior intercostal veins and we know this the lateral thoracic vein which is a tributary of axillary vein and there are posterior intercostal veins which will drain into a zygous vein so this is the arterial and venous drainage arterial supply and venous drainage of the mammary gland now coming to a very important lymphatic drainage lymphatic drainage of the mammary gland it is of great importance to the surgeon because carcinoma of breast spreads mostly along lymphatics to the regional lymph nodes so the main lymph nodes that we must know the lymph from the breast drains into which group of lymph nodes so first is the axillary group of lymph nodes the axillary group of lymph node mainly the anterior that is the pectoral group of lymph nodes and uh, in addition to that there are posterior lateral central and apical group of lymph nodes they also receive lymph from the breast either directly or indirectly then there are the parasternal that is the internal mammary lymph nodes which lie along internal thoracic vessels and some lymph from the breast also reaches the supraclavicular lymph nodes then the cephalic or deltopectoral nodes posterior intercostal nodes and the subdiaphragmatic and subperitoneal that is inferior phrenic lymph nodes now there is a plexus of lymph vessels which is present deep to areola of the breast <clears throat> and this is known as subareolar plexus of sepi subareolar plexus and most of the lymph from the breast drains into anterior or pectoral group of lymph nodes so these are the main lymph nodes now in the our patient in this case the swelling is in the upper outer quadrant so most likely from here the cancer cells may infiltrate axillary and out in axillary among the axillary most likely into the anterior or pectoral group of lymph nodes so very important you must know about the lymphatic vessels the there are two superficial and deep sets the superficial lymphatics drain the skin over the breast except for the nipple and areola and these lymphatic pass radially to the surrounding lymph nodes whereas the deep lymphatics drain the parenchyma of the breast and they also drain the nipple and areola so about 75% of the lymph from the breast drains into axillary 20% drains into internal mammary that is parasternal and 5% into posterior intercostal nodes and among the axillary we know that the lymphatics and mostly in the anterior that is the pectoral group of lymph nodes partly in the posterior and apical groups lymph from anterior and posterior passes to the central from central it will pass to the apical then infraclavicular and then supraclavicular group of lymph nodes 
The lymphatics from the deep surface of the breast pass through the pectoralis major muscle and the clavipectoral fascia to reach the apical nodes and also to the internal mammary nodes. From the supraclavicular nodes, the lymph goes via the subclavian lymphatic trunk. On the right side, it will be drained via the right lymphatic duct into the venous system, whereas on the left side into the thoracic duct and then into the venous system. Whereas from the internal memory that is parasternal nodes, the lymph will travel in the costal bronchomediastinal trunk, which on the right side will again be drained via the right lymphatic duct and on the left side thoracic duct eventually into the venous system. So this is the lymphatic drainage of the mammary gland. Now how does the cancer of the breast spread elsewhere? So there are two routes lymphatic spread and hematogenous spread. So most commonly the cancer of breast spread via lymphatic route from the lateral quadrant especially the upper and outer quadrant the cancer cells will infiltrate first the axillary and, uh, and we know that out of the axillary it is the anterior or pectoral group of lymph nodes. From the medial quadrants it will be draining into parasternal so this will be affected and thus potentially opposite side and so opposite breast will be affected because of this route. So because of the communication <coughs> of the superficial lymphatics of the two sides so cancer of breast may spread from one side to the other via this route. If the cancer is there in the lower and inferior inner quadrants then it will infiltrate the subdiaphragmatic and subperitoneal lymph plexus and then affect the abdominal organ mainly the liver and the cancer cell may drop into the pelvis. Eventually the major lymphatic through the major lymphatic channels it will go to venous system. Now the hematogenous route is mainly by the veins the venous route. If it is in the lateral portion then it will the cancer cells will travel via the axillary vein then to subclavian vein and then to superior vena cava. From the inferolateral portion it will travel via the posterior intercostal veins then into azygous system and then superior vena cava and because of communication of these veins with the vertebral venous plexus so it may affect vertebra and eventually the brain. From the medial portion of the breast the cancer cell may affect the internal thoracic vein via the internal thoracic vein to subclavian vein and superior vena cava. So these are very important route for the spread of cancer of the breast. So thank you uh, please like and subscribe my channel if you like the case based scenarios involving different parts of the body. Thank you.